What's up everyone? Thanks for watching the end. The people, places, and things that affect your world and our society. And you're watching In Depth, where we take topics and go in depth about it. That's pretty much what we do. And in case you have not met, this is our chief political correspondent herself, Stephanie Celia. I'm Hello. so well, I'm so happy to have her with me on the show. This is part two of a three-part series where we go in depth about some political topics, hence the chief political correspondent, right? Exactly. And so the, our uh, show topic today is the Middle East. And we're going to go um, talk about some of those the big headlines that have been coming out of that region of the world. It just keeps happening over and over again. Every day there's new headlines. And so we're going to start with Iran. Now I brought you the story about the um, elections in Iran, all the drama that unfolds shortly thereafter, and people are still protesting, trying to, you know, make sure that their voice was heard in that election. And so I just want to kind of talk to you about, you know, where, how does that fit in the global scale? Um, what does that mean for us sitting home at the couch or watching on YouTube? And um, what does that mean to us? And where do you see that going, sitting in the large scale? Well, James, I think one of the biggest debates that's going on here with Iran is whether or not we should intervene. Um, we obviously don't have the capacity to do anything as far as a war there in Iran, but there are people that are watching these clips from Iran of people getting beat and all this drama, you know, as far as Ahmadinejad um, trying to defend the results of the election, and they're wondering what should we be doing. Um, it's been a long time since the United States has seen horrific events such as this happening without us even being involved. Uh, and so people are wondering what should be done. I want to go back and, and give a little bit of uh, information concerning democracy and where I think Iran is heading right now. Personally, I think what you're seeing in Iran with people rallying out in the streets, um, contesting these results, is just a seed being planted for democracy. It seems that the people of Iran want more freedoms. And Mousavi, whether you agree with what he is stating or not, whether um, some people said he's not as um, uh, contemporary as we think, but whether you agree with that or not, the people want him. Some do, some don't. And so what you're seeing is, I think, the beginnings of what can become a democratic state, or at least a loosening of some of the current political ties and whatnot, some of the regulations and that sort of thing. Um, if you look back in the United States, our own history of democracy has not been a pretty thing. It, it hasn't been cute at all. Our Constitution was written, um, but it had been being interpreted in a very imperfect way that left many people, um, minorities, women, out of the loop of protection. And so what took place was people getting out in the streets, rallying. 1919 uh, and 1920, women got out in the streets and rallied for suffrage. That's why you got the amendment passed to give women the right to vote. And so what you're seeing in Iran is nothing new under the sun. It's violent. It's not pretty. You look at how we got uh, rid of Jim Crow laws in the United States with um, African Americans. It was not cute. You had people hosed down and all of those sorts of things. So we have to remember to extend, to an extent, the same patience with the development of democracy in Iran as we did in our own country here. And I don't remember it, seeing any footage in history of people coming in on us and telling mm -hmm. us how to start it. It's not pretty. It's not cute. People are hurt in the process. This is what happens when you're trying to get the ball rolling with democracy. The people have to want it. Right. And, and uh, the people are showing that they want it as well. 